hey, hey, good morning. We're outside again. I feel like I'm awfully close to you guys, but I'm doing good. All right, outside. Happy end of the week, everybody. Um, if you guys are wondering the title of this, I entitled this three questions every parent, every parent needs to ask. And it's in regards to your kid's education. But first things first, if you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when I get on. And please leave me a comment. We're going to start having um, giveaways for every 100 subscribers. If you're watching on Facebook, leave me a comment and say hi. If you're watching live, interact with me so I know you're there. I, Bessie and I don't want to feel like we're the only one out here. Uh, by ourselves because I know our neighbors come out in the morning and like what is Cindy doing and I was like don't worry Cindy is just talking to the world on her back deck don't worry this is normal and it is normal because you can go anywhere and see people and be like mm, you're an Instagram person you're a YouTube person I, I see you doing your 500 takes for one picture that's not me I point to click here we are just like I'm coming in live for you. Dusty gets up, goes to the bathroom, and we come out and do this. This is our little routine so far. All right, so we're gonna get right into it. Three questions every parent needs to ask about their question. Question number one. How do my kids learn? And I'm gonna put that down into a subcategory. If you have more than one kid, how does this kid learn? And how does this kid learn? And how does this kid learn? And how does this kid learn? Look at me, I'm almost doing a reel. You have to go through each of your kids and see how they learn. All right, you're like, Cindy, what does that mean? I'm going to take it really simple for you. There is four main thoughts about how people learn. They learn. Some learn with their eyeballs. They need to see it. That's called visual learners. Some need to hear it. Auditory learners. Um, some are kin... Kin... Oh, it's a hard word. Kinesthetic. I got it wrong, but that's close. It's also called tactile learning. You need to do it with your fingers. Like I need to do it, a hands-on product project in a kid that would be a tactile learner. And then the last one is regular reading and writing. They learn more of the, what we think of the traditional ways. I read something, I write an essay. You read something, you write an essay. That's, by the way, that's not my learning style. And then another video, I'll go over how people process because this is just how people learn. There's a whole way how you process what you learn. All right, so that's the first thing you need to ask what each of your kids' learning styles are. And these are all so you could set your kid up to, for success, and we all want to do that. All right, the second one is what school model is for them? You need to ask what kind of school model is for them. And if you don't know what school models are, like there's Montessori, there's Waldorf, there's public school, there's private school, there's private Christian school, there are, what's the word, classical schools. There's about a million different kinds of schools. They have like garden schools where you do outside, where it's an outdoor classroom. That's the style of school. So you need to see what is their style of learning like if a kid can't stand going outside a garden school is probably not for them where you're outside all the time if your kid has a hard time staying inside and thinks that's very boring then a garden school would be perfect for them outside doing things because most likely you probably have a tactile learner so you're out there actually doing the things instead of hearing and learning about them all right the last thing for number three what is the most important thing in their education? So you have to decide. And all of these things change from year to year, month to month, things like that. Oh, excuse me. What is the thing that's most for them? So like us, ours is that Ellie has a love of reading, a love of learning, and she knows how to think, not what to think. That is where our goal is for our kid that she will be a lifelong learner because we all know the story of the last time you read a book was when you were in high school English teacher it was the very last assignment you had to read Little Women or Beowulf and that's not even a book it's a poem but 
and that was the last time you read. Well, for me, I read all the time. I mean, I read a book a week, probably at the minimum. I would rather my child want to have a love of reading than remember that they only read because somebody required them to do it. So you could write a book report or essay about it. You see how some of this wouldn't work if you were the other three learning styles? Um, so I want a love of learning for my child. I want a love of reading for my child and a how to think. Because in today's world, we can find out the answers anywhere. YouTube has all the answers. And if YouTube doesn't have any answers, Google has all the answers. So if you know how to do it, then you can know how to find the answer. So lifelong learning is very important to us and I suspect it's probably very important to you too or you wouldn't be watching Cindy and Dusty out on the back deck talking about the three questions you need to ask about learning. So that's the three questions. You can also join our free challenge I have in my Heart Centered Advocacy Facebook group. It, the challenge is seven days to be an advocate. So you literally go through the seven steps for each situation that you need advocacy for or each person you need it. And it's easy peasy, lemon squeezy with that. So I will see you guys all on Monday and I will talk to you later. Bye.